name. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Well, suppose now, this very moment, I wanted a ball, an ordinary baseball. But there isn't a baseball in the room, all right. But I want one. I would actually assume that I am holding a baseball in my hand until I can feel it. You think you can't feel it? Well, now try it. Try to feel what it would be like if you held a baseball. Now, to prove that you have held it, see what it feels like, the difference now, a tennis ball. See any difference? Or like a golf ball. See any difference? A piece of silk. You feel any difference? If you can distinguish between these many objects, though they are subjective, then there must exist somewhere. If you can actually separate them in your mind's eye and distinguish between these objects, I can begin to feel, begin to sense, begin to smell a rose. Well, a rose doesn't smell or doesn't actually have the odor of another flower. I can detect the rose. Now, a lily, an Easter lily. I can detect that. Well, what does it do? Well, I'm going to get them. Someone will think of Neville and send him a flower. And it's going to be the flower that I'm going to actually feel and touch and smell. It works that way. Money has an odor. It's unlike any odor in the world. It's more fragrant to the miser than the most marvelous perfume in the world. He can tell it. You put a money bag to his face and it's like putting roses to mine. He loves it. He can smell money. He can feel it. Money has a distinct feel about it. Put a $20 bill in your hand and ask you to feel it. And then put another piece of paper in your hand and you can tell the difference. There's a difference. It is an odor to it. All this is part of the inner man that all things are possible to him. Try it. Before you condemn it, try it. And if you have the evidence to support my claim, well then it doesn't matter what the world will tell you. If he laughs at you, so what? So they laughed at everyone who had an idea that seemed a little bit off-center. Always laughed at him. They laughed at the idea of going to the moon. Well, now it's a, an accomplished fact. There are still those who won't believe it happened, you know, because they don't want to believe that it ever happened. There are those who said you couldn't go down and actually live underwater. Now we have a submarine. There are still those who won't believe it. You can present them with all the facts in the world, and they won't believe it. So I tell you, you try it first, and if it proves itself in performance, it doesn't really matter what the whole vast world thinks. Go about your father's business, which is yourself, and then live a full and wonderful life in this world of Caesar. And the day will come, you will actually depart this world. I mean this age. Because those who are departing it now, unless they are awakened, they still find themselves in a world just like this. But those who have awakened, who have experienced the second birth, the birth from above, find themselves in an entirely different age where they're all imagination and they are perfect and wherever they go everything is perfect you don't have to raise a finger to make anything perfect because they're perfect all things must conform to them for they're perfect that's heaven so heaven is not an area it's not a realm it's a body and when that body is awakened within you which is the wonderful human imagination completely awake, then wherever you go clothed in that body that is completely awake, everything is perfect. If you found yourself in a forest of dead trees, they'd all burst into foliage. In the desert, they would all bloom like the rose. Because you are there. No blind man, deaf man, no handicapped man could stand in your presence. He would be instantly transformed into a perfect man because you are perfect. That's heaven. It's harmony. So it's not a place where you're going to go, furry streets and all that nonsense. No. It's just simply you in a world 
that is perfect because you are perfect. And the day will come you will awaken that body where it is in you now. That body is in you but it's sound to sleep. And one day you will experience the resurrection and you'll know the mystery of the resurrection. When you rise and you rise within yourself. For the grave in which Christ is buried, as the Lord is buried, is your own skull. That's where he's buried. And in that tomb where he is buried one day, he will awake and he will come out of that tomb. And it's you who comes out of the tomb. And you'll know who you are. He is buried in every child in the world. This universal being. And yet one. Billions of us and yet only one Lord. And that one Lord in his fullness is buried in you individually. And when you awaken, you are here. So tonight take a go. Make it a lovely go. Either for yourself or for another. For any time that you exercise your imagination lovingly on behalf of another, you are mediating God to that other. So, bring a friend before your mind's eye. Represent him to yourself as the man or the woman that you would like them to be. And don't tell them, ask for no praise, just assume that they're talking to you and telling you the most marvelous news about themselves. And you congratulate them on that good news. And go your own way. Believe in the reality of that imaginal act. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen the day after, or a week later, or a month later. It has its own appointed hour, and it is ripening, and it's going to flower. So don't be concerned. Leave it alone. <coughs> and it will come to pass. So this is what I mean by feeling is the secret. I catch the mood, the feeling that would be mine if I were what I want to be. I don't have to touch something, I can if I want to, but it's the mood I'm speaking of. What would the feeling be like if she were well, if she were this? And then you catch it, just as though it is true. You always go to the end, and the end is where you begin. You're always imagining ahead of our evidence. So go to the end, and feel the end, and then dwell in that end, even though reason denies it and your senses deny it. You turn your back upon the doubters. That is your senses and what reason dictates. That's the hell or the devil or Satan in the world. That's the doubter. So you turn your back upon it. And then you walk as though things were as you want them to be. And living in that assumption, it slowly hardens into fact. Even though at the moment of the assumption it was denied by reason, an assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. So you learn to assume and learn to persist in the assumption, and it will come to pass. 